The glow of my computer screen cast an eerie luminescence in the otherwise dim room. The mundane routine of my day-to-day -day existence shattered when I stumbled upon the digital echoes of my wife's infidelity, an accidental revelation nestled in the pixels of an email. The subject line, innocently titled, About Yesterday, hinted at a clandestine joy that eluded our shared reality. The cursor blinked, mocking my hesitancy as I opened the message. Anne's words, a celebration of a day we never spent together, hung in the digital air like a dark cloud. Confusion and disbelief gripped me, freezing the breath in my lungs. The glow of the screen reflected the numbness that spread through my veins. Amidst the shock, a voice within me urged restraint. Instead of confronting Anne head-on, I chose the path of silent observation, curious to understand the depth of her deception. I sank into the shadows, letting the digital whispers guide my steps through the labyrinth of emotions. A few days later, over dinner, Anne's cheery demeanor seemed to mock the secret she harbored. I mustered the strength to probe. Anything interesting happened yesterday. The casual question masked the turmoil within. Her eyes darted briefly, a flicker of guilt quickly concealed by a practiced smile. No, just a regular Wednesday, she replied, a touch too convincingly. The weight of her words lingered in the air, mingling with the unsaid truth. Days turned into nights as I continued to tread lightly, observing the subtle shifts in Anne's behavior. The email had become a haunting specter, a puzzle piece that refused to fit into the image of our 18-year marriage. One evening, as we sat in the dim glow of the living room, I couldn't contain the mounting tension. Anne, can we talk about yesterday's email? The words hung between us, pregnant with unspoken revelations. She glanced up from her book, her eyes reflecting a mix of surprise and trepidation. What do you mean? Her voice wavered, a hesitant note betraying the facade. Your email, about a day we didn't spend together. What was it about? I pressed my gaze unwavering. Anne's composure faltered, and she stammered, Oh, that? It was just a mistake, probably a mix-up with my schedule. The forced nonchalance in her tone clashed with the vulnerability in her eyes. In that moment, the digital echoes reverberated in the room, creating a dissonance that shattered the illusion of normalcy. The unsaid words lingered like a silent storm, and as we sat in the charged atmosphere, the path ahead remained uncertain, obscured by the shadows of betrayal. The days unfolded like a series of shadows, each one casting doubt upon the facade of our seemingly tranquil life. The accidental email became a persistent whisper, urging me to explore the depths of my wife's deceit. Instead of confronting Anne immediately, I embraced the role of a silent observer, navigating the labyrinth of emotions with caution. In the evenings, as the sun dipped below the horizon, I found myself drawn to the window overlooking our quiet suburban street. Anne's car, parked next to Henry's in a familiarity that was more than neighborly, became a tableau of suspicion. Conversations with Anne became a delicate dance, the unsaid hanging in the air, suffocating the normalcy we had once known. One evening, as we sat on the porch, the tension palpable, I couldn't help but address the elephant in the room. Anne, there's something you're not telling me. About Henry, perhaps. The question lingered in the space between us, a fragile bridge waiting to be crossed. Anne looked up from her book, a flicker of discomfort in her eyes. What are you talking about? Her attempt at innocence fell flat, the unease betraying the practiced smile. Your connection with Henry seems different lately. Is there something I should know? I pressed, choosing my words carefully, aware of the fragility of the truth. Her gaze wavered, and she sighed. It's nothing, just some work stuff. You know how stressful it can get. The dismissive tone only intensified the echoes of suspicion. The nights were spent in restless contemplation, the digital echoes still resonating in my mind. The rhythm of Anne's breath as she slept beside me became a haunting reminder of the secrets she guarded. One afternoon, I found myself lingering near Anne's study, a clandestine act that mirrored the hidden aspects of our lives. The soft glow of the computer screen beckoned, and I succumbed to the temptation, navigating the labyrinth of her emails with trepidation. As I scrolled through the digital exchanges, the truth unraveled before my eyes. Cryptic messages, coded rendezvous, and the familiarity of betrayal etched in the lines of their electronic correspondence. 
The reality was a bitter pill to swallow, and yet it anchored me to the undeniable proof of her infidelity. Days turned into weeks, and my role as the silent observer became both a burden and a source of empowerment. The unspoken tension in our home grew, a silent war waged beneath the surface of normalcy. One evening, as the shadows lengthened, I confronted Anne once more. I can't ignore the distance between us any longer. There's something you're not telling me, Anne. The words hung heavily in the air, a precursor to the storm that loomed on the horizon. Anne looked into my eyes, the vulnerability in her gaze briefly overpowering the practice facade. Can we talk about this later? I'm not feeling well. She deflected, avoiding the confrontation that lingered between us. As she retreated into the sanctuary of our home, the tension remained, an unspoken truth waiting to be unearthed. The digital echoes had become a symphony of suspicion, and as I treaded lightly through the emotional minefield, the path ahead remained shrouded in uncertainty. The discovery of Anne's infidelity cast a long, looming shadow over the landscape of our once stable marriage. Instead of succumbing to the weight of betrayal, I embraced the role of strategist, formulating a meticulous plan to expose the affair and salvage the fragments of our fractured love. Late nights found me hunched over my desk, the glow of the computer screen reflecting the intensity of my resolve. The blueprint of retribution unfolded in the silence of the room, a complex web woven with threads of revenge and redemption. One evening, as Anne busied herself in the kitchen, I approached cautiously. I've been thinking, Anne, maybe we should plan a weekend getaway, just the two of us, I suggested, my tone concealing the storm of emotions brewing beneath the surface. She looked up, a glimmer of surprise in her eyes. A weekend trip? That's unexpected. But sure, why not? Her response held a hint of uncertainty, an unspoken awareness of the disconnection that had permeated our relationship. The weekend became a strategic move in my plan, a chance to observe Anne's behavior outside the confines of our home, to decipher the nuances of her interactions with Henry. As we navigated the picturesque landscapes, I played the role of the doting husband, the weight of my intentions concealed beneath the facade of normalcy. Back home, the blueprint evolved, incorporating elements of deception and revelation. I was thinking, Anne, maybe we should try counseling. It might help us reconnect, I suggested during a rare moment of vulnerability. She hesitated, the unspoken understanding between us hanging in the air. Counseling? I guess it couldn't hurt, she conceded, unaware that the suggestion was a calculated move in the intricate game I had initiated. The tapping of phones became my next move in the chess game of retribution. Late one night, I placed a concealed device on our home phone, an attempt to eavesdrop on the conversations that unfolded in the shadows of our lives. Days turned into weeks as I delved deeper into the intricacies of Anne's affair. One evening, as we sat in the dim glow of the living room, I broached the subject of her friendship with Henry. Anne, do you think we're growing apart? The question lingered, a subtle probe into the heart of our unraveling connection. She looked at me, a mixture of sadness and hesitation in her eyes. I don't know, maybe. It's just been so hectic lately. She admitted her words a feeble attempt to mask the truth. The orchestration of events took center stage as I strategically disrupted Anne and Henry's planned rendezvous. A flat tire, a sudden rainstorm, each obstacle a move in the calculated game of interference. One day, after causing a deliberate delay in their plans, Anne confronted me. Why are you acting so strange lately? What's going on? She demanded, her eyes searching mine for answers. I smiled, the mask of normalcy firmly in place. Nothing, Anne. I just want us to focus on our relationship and overcome any challenges together. The words, coated in honeyed reassurance, masked the intentions that fueled the grand design of retribution. As the blueprint unfolded, I found solace in the illusion of control. The delicate balance of revenge and redemption played out like a scripted drama, and as I navigated the intricacies of my plan, the path ahead remained shrouded in uncertainty. The symphony of retribution had only just begun, each note echoing with the echoes of betrayal. The blueprint of retribution took shape, and I found myself entwined in the intricate dance of manipulation. The strings of chaos, carefully strung together, became my instruments of disruption, 
orchestrating a symphony of interference to shatter Anne's clandestine affair with Henry. One evening, as Anne prepared for what she believed to be a romantic rendezvous, I executed the first move in this intricate game. The fire alarm at the motel blared unexpectedly, casting a chaotic shadow over their planned encounter. Anne, flustered and agitated, called me in distress. What's happening, love? Are you okay? I feigned concern, the echo of the fire alarm reverberating in the background. The fire alarm went off at the motel and I'm stuck outside. This is so frustrating. Anne's frustration spilled through the phone, a consequence of my calculated interference. I suppressed a smirk, knowing that chaos had disrupted their carefully laid plans. Don't worry, darling. I'll come pick you up. We can have a quiet night at home. I reassured her, the mask of normalcy firmly in place. The next move involved orchestrating a fake car breakdown. As Anne waited for me to rescue her, I made a show of inspecting the car. Looks like the tire is flat. Must have picked up a nail or something, I remarked, my tone casual. Anne sighed, her impatience palpable. Can't catch a break today, can we? She muttered, unaware of the strings of chaos I had meticulously woven around her secret rendezvous. Days later, the disruption continued as I manipulated a sudden rainstorm during their planned meeting. Anne's exasperated voice echoed through the phone as she canceled their meeting. I can't believe it's pouring out of nowhere. Guess we'll have to reschedule, she lamented. Unpredictable weather, I suppose. We can make it up another time, I replied, my words laced with a calculated nonchalance. In the midst of this orchestrated chaos, Anne's frustration grew evident. One evening, as she returned home, she confronted me. It feels like everything is going wrong lately. Do you think there's some cosmic force working against us? She questioned, her eyes searching mine for answers. I chuckled, feigning innocence. Just a series of unfortunate events, Anne. We'll get through it together. I reassured her, the illusion of solidarity shrouded in the shadows of my deceit. As I continued to pull the strings of chaos, Anne's demeanor shifted. The strain of disrupted plans and unforeseen obstacles weighed on her, creating a fracture in the foundation of her affair. Yet, beneath the surface, the turmoil within me intensified. One evening, after a particularly successful disruption, Anne approached me with a mixture of gratitude and frustration. I don't know how to thank you for being so understanding through all these challenges. It means a lot, she admitted. I embraced her, masking my conflicted emotions. We're a team, Anne. We'll face whatever challenges come our way. I declared the strings of chaos tightening around the fragile remnants of our fractured love. As the symphony of interference played out, I found myself entangled in a web of manipulation. The strings of chaos had become a double-edged sword, disrupting Anne's affair but also threatening to unravel the delicate threads of our own connection. The path ahead remained uncertain, a tightrope walk between revenge and redemption. In the aftermath of orchestrated chaos, a delicate dance unfolded, a carefully choreographed performance aimed at rebuilding the trust that betrayal had shattered. The art of redemption became my new endeavor as I sought to win back Anne's affection. One evening, as the shadows lengthened, I took a deep breath and approached Anne with an air of vulnerability. I've been thinking, Anne. Maybe we should try something different. How about a quiet night at home? The suggestion hung in the air, pregnant with the unspoken desire for intimacy. She looked at me, a flicker of curiosity in her eyes. A quiet night at home? That sounds nice, actually. What's the occasion? Her question lingered an acknowledgment of the shift in our usual routine. The stage was set for my first gesture of redemption. I led Anne to the sofa, placed her feet on my lap, and began a foot massage, a simple act laden with unspoken meaning. I thought you could use some relaxation, I said, my tone gentle, as my hands worked to ease the tension that lingered in the air. Anne, surprised by the gesture, couldn't help but inquire about the sudden change. This is unexpected, but I like it. What's gotten into you? She asked, a curious smile playing on her lips. I smiled back, the facade of normalcy masking the undercurrent of manipulation. Just realizing how much you mean to me, Anne. I want us to reconnect, I replied, my words echoing with a sincerity that blended seamlessly with the strings of my grand design. 
The next move in the art of redemption involved orchestrating a surprise dinner, an intimate affair set against the backdrop of our home. As the aroma of a carefully prepared meal wafted through the air, Anne's eyes widened in surprise. Dinner at home. You're full of surprises lately, she remarked, a hint of amusement in her voice. I chuckled, maintaining the illusion of spontaneity. I thought it would be nice for us to enjoy a quiet evening together. No interruptions, I said, my words chosen with precision to reinforce the narrative of rekindling our connection. As the evening unfolded, I continued to manipulate situations to ensure Anne remained emotionally connected to me. Subtle gestures, whispered words, each move calculated to chip away at the walls of betrayal that stood between us. Days turned into nights as I honed the art of redemption, a delicate balancing act between authenticity and manipulation. The foot massages became a ritual, surprise dinners a routine, each action a brushstroke in the canvas of rebuilding trust. One evening, after a particularly heartfelt moment, Anne looked at me with a softness in her eyes. You've been so kind to me in the past few weeks. I feel very fortunate to have you. She confessed, her words a balm to the wounds of deception. I embraced her, the conflict within me momentarily silenced by the warmth of her embrace. I just want you to know how much you mean to me, Anne. We'll get through this together, I whispered, the echo of my sincerity reverberating in the hushed intimacy of the moment. The art of redemption unfolded in the subtleties of our shared experiences. Foot massages, surprise dinners, whispered assurances, a symphony of gestures aimed at rebuilding what had been lost. As the illusion of reconnection deepened, I found solace in the fragments of a love that, though tarnished, still lingered in the shadows of our once happy home. The delicate dance of redemption reached a pivotal moment as I grappled with the unveiling of the mask I had meticulously worn. The artful illusion of reconnection began to crack, revealing the complexities beneath the surface. One evening, after a seemingly ordinary day, Anne approached me with a curious expression. You've been different lately, in a good way. I can't quite put my finger on it, but it's like you're trying to make up for something. She observed, her eyes probing mine for answers. I hesitated, the weight of deception heavy on my shoulders. I just realized how important our relationship is, Anne. I want to make sure we're both happy. I replied, the words a feeble attempt to deflect her suspicions. She nodded, a mixture of gratitude and skepticism in her gaze. Well, it's been nice. I appreciate the effort, she said, her words laden with unspoken questions that lingered in the air. As the days unfolded, Anne's scrutiny intensified. The foot massages and surprise dinners, once welcome gestures, now became a source of suspicion. Why the sudden change in routine and why so frequent? She asked one evening, her tone a blend of curiosity and skepticism. I sighed, the cracks in the facade widening. I just thought we needed a change, Anne, something to bring us closer. I replied, the weight of half-truths adding complexity to the narrative. The unraveling continued as Anne delved into the details of our altered dynamic. And these surprise dinners, is there a reason behind them? She pressed, her eyes sharp with a need for answers. I hesitated, a bead of sweat forming on my brow. I wanted to create special moments for us, to remind you of the love we share, I offered, the words a delicate dance between sincerity and manipulation. Anne, sensing the dissonance in my responses, grew more determined to unveil the truth. It just feels like you're trying too hard, like there's something you're not telling me, she confessed, her vulnerability breaking through the barriers of deception. I swallowed hard, grappling with the decision to confess or persist in the charade. And there's something I need to tell you. I began, the weight of guilt evident in my voice. She looked at me, a mixture of anticipation and dread in her eyes. What is it? She asked, her voice tinged with a hint of fear. Taking a deep breath, I began to peel away the layers of my carefully constructed mask. The foot massages, the surprise dinners, they weren't just about reconnecting. I knew about your affair with Henry. I admitted, the truth hanging heavily in the air. Anne's face paled, the shock of revelation momentarily freezing her in place. You knew, she whispered, her voice a fragile echo of disbelief. I found out through an accidental email. I wanted to confront you, but instead, I devised this plan, 
thinking it would bring us back together, I explained the sincerity in my confession attempting to mend the fractures that widened between us. The room fell silent as Anne processed the revelation. So, everything, the disruptions, the gestures, it was all a charade? She asked, her voice a mixture of anger and hurt. I nodded, the weight of my actions settling like a heavy burden. I thought if I could make you feel something for me again. We could overcome the betrayal. But I see now that it was a misguided attempt at redemption. I admitted the vulnerability in my words exposing the raw truth. Anne, overcome with emotion, took a step back. I don't know what to say. You created this elaborate fiction to manipulate me, she exclaimed, her eyes welling with tears. I'm sorry, Anne. I thought it would fix us. But all it did was deepen the rift. I understand if you can't forgive me. I uttered, the consequences of my misguided actions hanging heavily in the air. As the truth unfurled, the fragile remnants of our fractured love lay exposed. The art of redemption had crumbled, leaving behind a landscape of broken trust and unspoken pain. The path ahead remained uncertain, shrouded in the echoes of betrayal that reverberated through the remnants of what was once our shared life. The revelation of my elaborate deception hung in the air like a heavy storm, casting a shadow over our once turbulent marriage. Echoes of devastation reverberated through the walls of our home, each shattered illusion leaving behind a trail of heartache. Anne, confronted with the truth, retreated into a chilling silence. The weight of betrayal pressed upon her shoulders, and as the echoes of my confession lingered, the room became a chamber of unspoken grief. I never thought you'd do something like this. Anne finally spoke, her voice a fragile echo of the woman who once trusted me without reservation. I know, Anne. I thought I could fix us, but all I did was make it worse. I confessed, my words heavy with regret. The room became a battleground of emotions, the air thick with the residue of shattered trust. How could you manipulate me like this? Wasn't the affair enough? Anne's voice wavered, a mixture of anger and pain coloring her words. I thought I could make you love me again, that we could move past the affair. I was wrong, and I understand if you can't forgive me. I replied, the weight of guilt evident in my tone. Days turned into nights, each moment a tense tableau of emotional wreckage. And, once the center of my world, became a distant figure navigating the ruins of our shattered bond. One evening, as the echoes of devastation reverberated through our home, Anne spoke, her voice a whispered lament. I need time space. I can't process all of this right now, she declared, the gulf between us widening with each word. I'll give you whatever you need. I offered my heart heavy with the consequences of my misguided actions. In the silence that followed, Anne retreated into the solitude of her thoughts. The room, once filled with the orchestrated gestures of redemption, now stood as a testament to the fractures that had irreversibly marred our connection. Weeks passed, and as the echoes of devastation lingered, Anne found the strength to articulate the pain that had taken residence in her heart. I don't know if we can come back from this. The trust is shattered, and I don't even know who you are anymore. She confessed, her voice a haunting melody of heartbreak. I want to fix this, Anne. I want us to find a way back. I pleaded, the desperation in my words echoing through the remnants of our fractured love. Anne, wearied by the weight of betrayal, looked at me with a gaze that held the shadows of a love irretrievably lost. I don't know if there's anything left to fix. The echoes of what we had are too faint now, she uttered, the finality of her words sealing the fate of our once happy home. The room, once a witness to the grand design of redemption, now stood as a mausoleum of shattered dreams. The echoes of devastation lingered, haunting the corridors of our shared history. The path ahead remained uncertain, obscured by the remnants of a love that had succumbed to the destructive forces of betrayal. As the echoes of devastation settled into a melancholic rhythm, the time for acknowledging consequences had arrived. The shattered remnants of our marriage lay before us, and in the cold light of truth, we faced the repercussions of our actions. One evening, as the weight of our fractured love hung heavy in the air, Anne and I sat in the living room, the silence a spark contrast to the once vibrant echoes of our shared laughter. Anne, her eyes reflecting a mixture of sorrow and resignation, broke the silence. We can't keep pretending that everything is fine, 
This mess is of our own making, and we have to face the consequences. She utter her words a painful acknowledgement of the reality we could no longer escape. I nodded, the weight of guilt settling like an anchor in the pit of my stomach. You're right, Anne. We can't avoid the consequences of what we've done. I admitted my voice a solemn echo in the hushed atmosphere. The journey through acknowledging consequences became a meticulous examination of our choices. The calculated deception, the misguided attempts at redemption, and the irrevocable damage inflicted upon the fragile tapestry of our marriage. Anne, her face etched with the lines of regret, looked at me with a vulnerability that mirrored my own. We both played a part in this, and now we have to confront the aftermath. Whatever happens, we need to be honest with ourselves, she declared, the weight of her words resonating with a truth we could no longer evade. Days turned into weeks, and in the crucible of acknowledging consequences, Anne and I navigated the delicate terrain of accountability. Dialogues, once strained and heavy with unspoken pain, became a necessary catharsis. One evening, as we sat across from each other, Anne spoke with a weariness that echoed the toll of our shared history. I never thought our marriage would come to this. The consequences of our actions are irreparable, she confessed, her words a poignant acknowledgement of the irreversible damage inflicted upon our love. I sighed, the reality of our choices weighing heavily on my conscience. I never intended for things to spiral out of control. I thought I could fix us, but all I did was make it worse. I admitted my voice tinged with regret. The acknowledgement of consequences became a painful dialogue, a conversation that laid bare the intricacies of our mistakes. As we grappled with the fallout, the question of whether we could rebuild or whether it was time to accept the irreversible consequences loomed over us like a specter. Anne, her gaze searching mine, uttered words that resonated with the finality of our shared journey. We can't change the past but we can decide what happens next. Whatever that may be, we have to face it together, she asserted, her voice carrying a resolve that transcended the echoes of devastation. The room, once witness to the grand design of redemption, now bore witness to the raw honesty of acknowledging consequences. The path ahead remained uncertain, the contours of our shared future defined by the choices we were now compelled to make. In the penultimate chapter of our shared narrative, the unraveling of our once intertwined lives unfolded with a sense of inevitability. The fragile threads of our marriage, strained by deception and betrayal, began to fray, and the truth we had long sought to conceal emerged as an undeniable force. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the room, Anne and I sat in a silence that echoed with the weight of unspoken decisions. The unraveling was palpable, a tension that hung between us like a taut wire. Anne, her eyes bearing the weariness of a heart that had weathered too many storms, broke the silence. I've been thinking and I don't know if we can salvage what's left of us. The trust is gone, and the unraveling seems inevitable, she admitted, her words a poignant acknowledgement of the gulf that had widened between us. I nodded, the echoes of consequences reverberating through the room. I understand, Anne. I never meant for it to come to this, but I accept the unraveling as a consequence of our choices. I replied, my voice heavy with the acceptance of a truth that had become impossible to ignore. As the unraveling progressed, dialogues that once held the promise of redemption now carried the weight of resignation. I don't even know who we are anymore. The unraveling has revealed layers of deception and pain I never thought existed. Anne confessed, her vulnerability laid bare in the dimming light. I sighed, Grappling with the finality of our shared history, the unraveling forces us to confront the reality of our actions. We can't change the past, but we can decide what comes next. I offered the words a feeble attempt to navigate the treacherous terrain of acceptance. Days turned into nights, and in the unraveling, Anne and I found ourselves standing at the precipice of a decision that would define the next chapter of our lives. Do we keep holding on to the remnants of what we had, or do we let go and embrace the unknown? and question, her eyes searching mine for answers. The room, once witness to the grand design of redemption, now stood as a somber stage for the final act of our shared story. Sometimes letting go is the only way to move forward, I replied, the echoes of acceptance threading through my words. The unraveling reached its crescendo, 
And in a moment of shared clarity, Anne and I acknowledged the inevitability of our paths diverging. Maybe we were never meant to fix what was broken. Maybe the unraveling is the only way to find a semblance of peace, Anne mused, her words carrying the weight of a decision that loomed on the horizon. As the unraveling continued, the room became a silent witness to the dissolution of a love that had once been the heartbeat of our existence. The path ahead remained uncertain, obscured by the echoes of the unraveling, and the question of whether we could find solace in the aftermath lingered like a haunting melody.